Friday DP, I'm Ashley Oaks. And I'm Sarah Asmussen. On today's April 15th show, we'll be covering Day of Silence, NHS Scholarship Opportunity, and more. DP, DP News starts now. now. Here's an important and exciting message from your DP admin. There was a school. There was a school near Goodland Town. Near Goodland Town, the awesomest school. The awesomest school that you ever did see. That you ever did see. And our charger spirit flowed all around. Our spirit flowed all around. And at this school, and at this school, there was a staff. There was a staff. The caringest staff. The caringest staff that you ever did see. That you ever did see. And the staff at the school and the school near the town. And our charger spirit flowed all around. Our spirit flowed all around. And with this staff, and with this staff, there were some kids. There were some kids. The very best kids. The very best kids. That you ever did see. That you ever did see. And the kids with the staff and the staff at the school and the school near the town. And our charger spirit flowed all around. Our spirit flowed all around. This next week holds. This next week holds. A visit by committee. A visit by committee. The thoroughest committee. The thoroughest committee. That you ever did see. That, that you ever did, did see. The committee who observes of the kids with the staff and the staff at the school and the school near the town and our charger spirit flowed all around our spirit flowed all around. <laughs> Don't forget to smile. Go to class on time. Pick up your trash. Yeah, pick up your trash. Be good chargers. Be good chargers. <laughs> Thanks, Admin. Today is Day of Silence, which is a student-led national event that brings attention to anti-LGBT name-calling, bullying, and harassment in schools. Students from middle school to college take a vow of silence to, in an effort to encourage schools and classmates to address the problem of anti-LGBT and behavior. By illustrating the silencing effect of bullying and harassment on LGBT students and those perceived to be LGBT, those who are participating have wristbands and or a pledge card. The only way they are communicating through is writing. There is a table by the Social Equality Club and trans -Cis Alliance at lunch where people can get more information. Now on to other news. The second last Beautify DP is tomorrow, Saturday, April 16th from 9 a.m. to noon. Sign up on the clipboard outside Ms. Stone's office and come dressed appropriately for cleanup projects and bring a refillable water bottle. Students who expect to qualify for NHS are required to complete two hours of community service each semester. Earn your hours by attending Beautify DP. Seniors are, who are lifetime members of NHS and or CSF, be sure to pick up the National Honor Society Scholarship application in Ms. Stone's office for a chance to ease your college tuition. The deadline to apply for this scholarship is Wednesday, April 27th. If you have questions about whether or not you are a lifetime member, please check with your counselor. A quick reminder for seniors to go straight to the EPAC after third period where, where they will be spending all of their fourth listening to a motivational guest speaker. Tonight is opening night for the DP Theatre Company's original production of The Grand Duchy. The show starts tonight at 7 in the EPAC. But if you can't make it to tonight's show, two performances will be held tomorrow at 2 and 7. Tickets are $10 for students and $14 for adults and can be brought and can be bought online at dptheatercompany.org or at the box office after school. Your candidates for presidents are Tommy Johnson, Lauren Young, and vice president is Ellie Cutcliffe, Cindy Diaz, Rocky, for secretary it's Rocky Usaka. Treasurer is Alex Edgar and Lauren Bowie. 
Historian Sienna Wagner and Adriana Perez. Please vote now with your ballots. Attention teachers, after DP News, please give only underclassmen ballots to vote for next year's ASB officers. Leadership will be coming around to pick up the ballots. If they are not turned in by the end of class period, please turn them into Ms. Martin's office. That's all for your DP News today. Now over to Peter with the sports. What's up? What's up, Chargers? This is Peter here with your sports report. Boys Volleyball earned another Channel League victory over the visiting Ventura Cougars Tuesday night. Our guys beat the Cougars in four sets, 25-14, 25-16, 23-25, and 25-20. Yesterday, our boys stomped Santa Barbara in three straight sets to bring home the win. The scores were 25-21, 25-22, and 25-21. Solid defense by Parker Crossland, Will Parker, and Trey Klopstein held the Dons at bay while the attack was propelled by Eli Wopat, Adam Shields, and Elliot Brainerd. This is the first time in almost 30 years DP has beat SB on their courts. The DP track girls swept the 800 meters and our track team got big points from Blake Harrison, David Poindexter, and Aiden Gilks to pull out a 65-59 dual meet win over Buena in a Channel League track and field meet on Thursday. Christina Rice won the 1600 meter and Natalie Hawkins won the 3200 meter. Athletes all across the board stepped up today, said Coach Christensen, and a big win at Buena is huge for our team. Guys Golf played through windy conditions at Glen Annie Golf Course yesterday and came out with a big win against Ventura. Zach Steinberger led the charge with a 76 to lead the team. Golf is 4-1 in, le in Channel League and is growing into a force. Golf is 12-4 overall. Boys Baseball played Santa Barbara on Tuesday, losing a tough game 3-0. Gio Macias played great, hitting two doubles, but it was not enough to beat Santa Barbara. We have a chance to win this series today at Santa Barbara, however, as we play SB at 315, so be sure to come out and support. And baseball is 12-5 overall. Girls Lax played on Wednesday, crushing Dunn High School. The girls had a 14-3 score at halftime and had a 10-point lead for all of the game. Becca Baxis had seven goals and Jamie Sharp had five to lead the girls to an 18-8 win. That's all for your sports report, DP. Now over to Nandini with current events. Good morning, DP. I'm Nandini with the news. This weekend is Santa Barbara's annual Earth Day. Newshawk says Santa Barbara's Earth Day began in 1970 when the massive oil spill in the Santa Barbara Channel the previous year introduced the country to the consequences of environmental damage and caught the attention of the nation. The Earth Day tradition continues today, nearly a half a century after the first one. Community Environmental Council hosts the festival. The Community Environmental Council was also established in the wake of the 1969 oil spill. It is free to all attendees and will be held downtown this weekend in Alameda Park. Events will be going on both Saturday and Sunday. Hopefully you get, to get, hopefully you get a chance to check out this awesome event and learn about sustainability. I'm Nandini with the news signing off. Thanks for listening and have a fun and safe weekend, DP.